Hello everyone, Reza here. The new Power Automate Cloudflow Designer Experience is now generally available and is the default experience when you create a new flow. So it's important for flow makers to learn about the new experience. This video has you covered, plus I will showcase the latest features of the new experience. So let's check the video out in action. The new updated Power Automate Cloudflow Designer is now generally available, which means when we create a new Cloudflow, we will begin with the new designer experience. In make.powerautomate.com, on the home screen, we have the co-pilot experience where we can simply describe in detail the automation that we are trying to build and Copilot will suggest a Power Automate flow for us that we can select and we will land in the new designer experience. Or we can go to create and create a flow from scratch. When we start from blank, we can pick the trigger for our workflow. For the demo, I will pick an instant cloud flow and I will select manually trigger the flow and click create. And this will land me in the new Cloudflow designer experience. My scenario is I need to get items from a SharePoint list that are overdue and send it out in an email. The flow will be triggered manually. To name the flow, top left, simply click and provide a name to the flow. The center area is the canvas. I can select, move around the canvas. I can zoom in, zoom out, or fit view. To add an action, we simply click plus and say add an action. Directly sets the focus. We can see all the top used actions. I'm trying to query a SharePoint list. So I can simply search for SharePoint, here is the SharePoint connector. I can see the top three actions here. You can also click see more. This will list out all the actions related to that specific connector. I'm trying to get items from a SharePoint list. So I will select get items. My SharePoint site address. I'll select my SharePoint list name. I'll search for issue. The name of my list is issue tracker. So I'll select it. These were the two required properties for the specific action. Actions and flow can have additional advanced parameters. If I open this drop down, I can pick and choose those parameters. Or I can simply click show all to list out all those options. I will add my OData filter query which is status equal to in single quotes in progress. Need to add another condition to this. That's an AND condition. Due date less than here, I would like to put today's date and time. And for that, I need to write an expression. To get to the expression, here we have fx, that's the Insert expression action, simply select it. Here is the expression box. I can increase its height or I can also go full screen mode. Here I can simply type my expressions. We've got the list of all the expression functions here. There is also dynamic content. So if I want to pick any properties from preceding actions, I can easily pick it right here in the single expression box experience itself. On the top, we have a small info icon. If you select that, it will take us to the documentation for the expression functions for Power Automate. In my case, I need today's date and time. Notice as I start typing, IntelliSense will guide me through. 
we have an expression function called UTC now that gives the current date and time. I simply enter my expression, click add, and it will add that expression in the filter query property. Get items. If I want to rename this, I can simply click on its name and update the name of the action. I can also go to the three ellipses, more commands, and I can add a note. So this specific action, notice it has a command. And if I simply hover over it, it will give me that command. The link here is the connection for that specific connector that is being leveraged. To delete the action, I can simply select three ellipses and delete. I can close the properties panel. Next, I would like to check if the item count that it's returned is greater than zero. So I'll add another action, condition under control. Here is the condition action. I'll select it. So here, once again, I'll go to expression. I'll use the expression function length of right in the expression editor itself. I can go to dynamic content and pick the value dynamic content property coming from the get items action. I'll click add that adds the expression. Is this greater than the value zero? If true, I would like to send an email and the email needs to include the items that I have captured in an HTML table fashion. So I'll insert a new step in the true condition, add an action. Here, when you're adding actions, there's also a drop down for runtime. So if you pick built in, this will list out all the built in actions that you can leverage. I can pick standard, which will list out all the st standard licensed connectors. I can pick premium. This will list out all the premium licensed connectors. And if there are any custom connectors that were built in this environment, they would list up right here. In my case, search for the action HTML table. And under the data operation action, here is the create HTML table action. I will select this. From, I need to use dynamic content. The Thunderbolt symbol here, if I select it, it will open all the dynamic content. From expects an array. The only array dynamic content property that get items exposes is value. Additionally, if I simply select forward slash, it will open up those same options for me. So I want to insert dynamic content. I'll pick value. Here I have the advanced option for columns. My columns, I'll pick custom. Here I can define my table header and the values that it will include. My first header would be issue title. And in the value, I would like to pick the title column value from my SharePoint list, dynamic content, and pick title. I would like to show the priority, the due date, and assign to. So priority, priority value, assign to, I picked the display name, and due date, once again, I leveraged an expression to transform the due date in the specific format. Now I have the HTML table. I also want to add some HTML styling. So I'll add another action. I'll pick compose, rename this to HTML style. I have a style tag ready that I'll just plug in. And right after this, I would like to go ahead and send an email. This email, I'll send to myself. Subject would be overdue tasks information. And in the body, I'll insert dynamic content. I'll pick my style. The body has rich text enabled, so I can add some additional styles here. 
I can select, make it bold, indent, have different font options to choose from. And right here, I will go and insert the dynamic content output from my HTML table action. If I also want to add a link, let's say a link to my SharePoint list, I'll enter the text, open list, I'll select it, click insert link, click edit, type the URL, save, and this, I will change its text color to blue. So that's a link, advanced parameters, or simply say show all, so I can see all the properties that I can set. Let's say the importance of the email, I'll set it to high. Now each action also has settings. This is where you can define the action timeout, run after settings. You can also go to code view to see the entire code associated with that specific action. You can also add static values for testing purposes. And about will basically give you information about that specific connector. So this completes my flow. I'll go ahead and click save. So this will go and save my flow. I can test the flow right here. Or if I click back, this will take me to the flow details page. From here, if I click edit, I'm back in the new flow designer experience. I can test the flow right here. I'll click run. The flow has triggered. You can see all the actions that are executed. You can also see how long each action has taken. If I select the action, it will give us all the details, the inputs, the outputs. If I click show raw outputs, I can see the entire output JSON of the get items action. My condition was true, so it does have records that are overdue, and it's gone ahead and sent the email. Here is the email that I have received. Here is the HTML table. Here are all the details of the tasks that are overdue. Remember the link, open list. If I click, we'll straight out open the SharePoint list. Back to the flow, the get items action could result in an error while trying to retrieve the data. For example, let's say if I make a mistake in the filter query expression. When it would run, it would fail but I want to perform error handling. So what I can do here is I can insert a parallel branch. So I would like to send an email if there is an error. So I'll pick send an email. That's my action. This send an email action should run if the preceding action fails. So in the new designer, if you go to settings for the action, here is configure run after. By default, the action runs if the previous action is successful. But here I'm gonna change it to run this if the previous action has failed or skipped or timed out, but not when it is successful. Because if it is successful, it should go to the condition. And we can clearly see the visual indicators here on the new designer interface, which is very neat. So I would like to send the email here. I'll send this email to myself. I would like to give a link to the flow run. I'll write an expression for that. I'll click add. And this, I wanna make it available as a link. So what I can do here is I can select this copy this, delete, I'll say link to flow run, select, go to link, edit, and simply paste that expression that I copied and save. Now, if I was to save the flow, and if I was to test the flow, the flow runs, 
the action fails, the email is sent for failure. Here is the email. Here's the link to the flow run. Currently, the flow run will take us to the classic designer experience. But here, I can clearly see that this action has failed. And here is the reason for the failure. It's my incorrect expression. One of the top asks was copy and paste. If you simply right click on an action, you can now copy the action and paste that action. You can also move actions by simply selecting them, drag and drop. I am in the new designer. If I would like to go to the classic designer, I can simply switch this off. Since I've not saved the flow, I'm getting the option to switch without saving or save the flow and switch. I'll say save and switch. So it will first go and save my flow and switch over to the classic designer experience. Bear in mind, the flow is exactly the same. And if I click new designer, this will take me straight back to that new designer experience. If I was to create an automated cloud flow, let's say a flow that triggers when a new response is submitted in a Microsoft form. The first step is it tries to create the connection. I'll pick a form and then I will add an action to get the response details from that Microsoft form. My response ID will be dynamic content coming in from the trigger action. Now what I want to show you here in the new designer experience, if I was to pick this, you'll notice it puts a for loop. The reason why this loop action comes in is because for automated flows, if you select the trigger action, and go to settings, the feature split on is turned off. Split on enables flow to start an instance per item when that event takes place. Now, if you need a flow for each of those items, you simply turn on split on, go to array and pick the value property on which it is going to split and give you the independent items. Now, if I was to go and add the action to get response details from my form where the response ID is coming from my trigger, this time, if you notice, it does not put the for loop. The co-pilot that comes with the new designer is very helpful. I've done a full video on this. Here, I have a flow that performs document approvals with security setup. So it's quite a complex flow, as you can see. Copilot can do a lot here. For example, can you explain what this flow does? And Copilot describes what the current automation does. I can even select a specific action and ask Copilot to explain that action. And with Copilot, we can ask it to add actions, replace actions, explain actions, or just ask general questions about Power Automate. The Copilot is only available in the new designer experience. If you would still like to go back to the classic designer experience, on the top right, you can go to the three ellipses and switch to the classic designer. There are constant improvements coming in the new designer. If you would like to give any feedback around the new designer experience, we have the send feedback option. You can select this and provide your feedback. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.